Captain Dadis Kamara, the most odd ex-military officer with a TV show. Captain Musa Dadis Kamara, known as Moise Dadis Kamara, is a former Guinean army commander who served as president of Guinea from December 23, 2008 until January 15, 2010. He was the leader of the National Council for Democracy and Development, which took power in a military coup on December 23, 2008, following the death of longtime president Lasana Conte. Protests erupted in Conakry's capital on September 28, 2009, demanding that Kamara resign. Several dozen individuals were killed as a result of the security forces' retaliation. Kamara was wounded in the head during an assassination attempt on December 3, 2009, and afterwards fled to Morocco for medical care. The United States and France expressed their wish to keep Kamara out of the nation, while Sekube Konate took over as acting president. Since then, he has lived in exile in Burkina Faso, where he converted from Islam to Catholicism and changed his name from Musa to the French version Moïse. Hello viewers, welcome to another informative episode on the channel. Make sure to stick around as we explore the life of Captain Dadis Kamara. But before we get into the details, if you're new to our channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so as to be the first to see our future uploads. Without further delay, let's get back to our subject. Brief Background Musa Dadis, who was born on January 1, 1964 in Kule, Guinea Conakry, in a small village on the country's forest border, realized the significance of education since his childhood and was a serious student. Later, he and his entire family relocated to the capital to study law and economics. He learned five languages while supporting his family as a coconut vendor, utilizing his business abilities and natural leadership qualities. Kamara then joined the Army of Guinea in 1990 as a corporal, where he was soon promoted to a managerial post in charge of the Army's essential logistics. Kamara utilized his laid-back personality and natural friendliness to build a network of military allies. He was designated commander of the Guinean Army's fuel supply section, a department of the Guinean Minister of Defense cabinet, in November 2008. He was a key figure in the 2008 Guinean military uprising. Prior to the December 2008 coup, he was hardly recognized among the general public. The Christmas Coup The President of the National Assembly, Abubakar Sompare, stated on television in the early hours of December 23, 2008, that Conte had died on the 22nd due to sickness. Six hours after Sompare declared Conte's death, a declaration proclaiming a military coup d'etat was delivered on television. This declaration, issued by Captain Kamara, claimed that the government and the institutions of the Republic have been dissolved. The suspension of the constitution as well as political and union activities was also stated in the statement. According to Kamara, the coup was necessary due to Guinea's deep despair in the face of widespread poverty and corruption, and he also claimed that the current institutions were incapable of tackling the country's challenges. Furthermore, Kamara stated that someone from the military will be named president, while a civilian would be appointed prime minister at the helm of a new ethnically balanced administration. Captain Kamara becoming president On December 24, 2008, a message was issued over the radio confirming Captain Kamara's election as president of the National Council for Democracy and Development. CNDD. Later that day, Kamara announced on the radio that the CNDD did not want to be in power permanently and that it planned to run the country for two years, pledging legitimate and transparent presidential elections by the end of December 2010. This contradicted a previous declaration that pledged an election within the legally allowed 60-day term. 
Kamara stated on the radio on December 25th that he does not want to run for president at the end of the two-year transition period. He further stated that the CNDD was resistant to bribery. People, according to Kamara, had begun to show up with bundles of money in an attempt to corrupt them, stating, they've attempted to offer our wives money and our children cars. He threatened to personally go after anyone who attempted to corrupt them. Bloody Monday On September 28, 2009, opposition party members demonstrated in Conakry Stade du 28 September, demanding that Kamara should resign. Several hundred members of Guinea's security forces stormed the stadium in Conakry and opened fire on tens of thousands of non-violent opposition supporters. At least 150 Guineans were dead or dying, and around 1,200 civilians were injured in and around the stadium complex by late afternoon. Security officers took hundreds of remains from the stadium and morgues after shutting them off and burying them in mass graves. For several days, personnel of the security forces who had deployed across the district, from where the majority of opposition supporters originated, perpetrated numerous violations, including murder, rape, and plunder. Hundreds of other opposition supporters were unlawfully held in army and police prisons, where many suffered horrific violations, including torture. To date, the Guinean government has failed to investigate, much alone hold responsible any member of the Guinean security forces involved in the deaths, rapes, and other crimes. Assassination Attempt Kamara was shot on December 3, 2009 by soldiers under the leadership of his assistant, Abu Bakar Diakite. A government spokesman stated he was just mildly injured, but unidentified military officials claimed Kamara was in critical condition after being shot in the head. Kamara's bodyguard and driver were both killed in the incident. On December 4th, the New York Times reported that Kamara had departed the nation for medical care in Morocco, despite authorities' statements that he was not in critical health. Sekouba Konate, Vice President and Defense Minister, returned from Lebanon to lead the country. Kamara was taken to Burkina Faso on January 12, 2010. Kamara, Konate and former Burkina Faso President Blaise Compaore developed a formal declaration of 12 principles, guaranteeing the return of Guinea to civilian administration within six months after meeting in Ouagadougou on the 13th and 15th of January. The military decided not to run in the next elections, and Kamara agreed to continue his treatment outside of Guinea. Musa Dadis had been in exile in Burkina Faso since 2010, where he converted from Islam to Catholicism, changing his birth name Musa, also known as Moses, to its French version Moïse. Kamara resigned as president of his party, the Patriotic Forces for Democracy and Development FPDD, in October 2016, and declared that he will not run in the next municipal and parliamentary elections. There you have it viewers, thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. And if you found this video informative enough, ensure to check on our previous videos on African political coup leaders. And make sure to check once more on that subscription button while leaving your thoughts on the comment section. Thanks for watching.